Hello and welcome to the presentation on moments. Okay, This is just a review of moments with some exam questions thrown in and it's not really intended to teach you the principle of moments but hopefully if you've covered it a little bit uh, it'll get you somewhere. Let's get straight in there. Okay, So first of all a moment, a singular moment is just force multiplied by a horizontal distance from a pivot point. Okay. Um, when we're talking about moments, we're talking about two or more of these moment, <laughs> okay, individual moment. All right, so you'd have to put the apostrophe in the right place if you're an English uh, English uh, student. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, this is a good example: the donkey and the um, and the load of a situation where we have two moments acting at the same time about one pivot point, the centre of this wheel. Um, you can see immediately that the turning force or the torque generated by this mass here is larger than that of the donkey and that's why it's raised up in the air. So how can we analyze this with moments? First we choose the center of mass of each, the load and the donkey, and um, draw the weight on. Okay, the weight is uh, a force in newtons, mass times gravity, same for each, and the load is obviously much heavier and a much larger weight than the weight of the donkey, so the load's arrow is larger. Okay? The distance from, the horizontal distance from the pivot, okay, that's this red arrow. Okay, and you can see again that this is quite a short line compared to this line, so the uh, horizontal distance from the pivot for the load is much larger as well. So if we calculated the moments for each the anticlockwise moment, turning it anticlockwise, is um, a small force multiplied by a, smaller di a small distance, which is going to give us a smaller number, than a large force multiplied by a large distance, which is going to give us a larger number. And that tells us why this donkey and uh, cart and uh, load is not balanced. It's not in equilibrium. Okay, uh, so let's go on and look at the conditions of equilibrium. Right. What does equilibrium mean for a start? Equilibrium means that an object is not accelerating in any direction. It could be moving along at a constant speed, but it's not getting faster and faster and faster. Okay? So it's not accelerating up, down, left or right. It could be moving up and down or left and right, but not getting faster and faster. All right. It is also not experiencing any angular acceleration, which means that the thing could be turning at a constant speed, but it's not getting faster and faster and faster. So it's not accelerating angularly. Okay? So for that, to be, for that to be the case, we must meet these two conditions. Firstly, the anti-clockwise moments must be equal to the clockwise moments. That is exactly the same as what we just saw with the donkey uh, example. And that the sum of the horizontal and the vertical forces are equal. Okay? So this, is just as, this just means that um, it's not, again, it's not accelerating in any direction up, down, left or right. Alright, so let's look at some example questions. This man is sitting at the station in Waterloo Station, uh, and uh, he's not accelerating up, down, left, or right. Is he in equilibrium? equilibrium? And the answer is yes. The forces up and down on him are equal. Uh, he's not uh, experiencing any particular forces pushing him forwards or backwards, so I haven't bothered putting him on, but uh, you can assume that they're equal as well. He's not accelerating, so he is in equilibrium. Okay, let's have another. Now let's have a look at how we can apply this to solve some problems. Here's a question about equilibrium. We're being told that this is in equilibrium, this situation. Okay, So we should be able to, from our knowledge of the word equilibrium, find out what the force or the reading at Q will be. These are Newton meters. All right, so the forces acting down are this 3 Newton, 2 Newton, and 3 Newton. And there's this force acting up, P, which is 3 Newtons, and Q. So I could write a simple uh, equation, the force of R, W, and S, R, W, and S, should add up to P and Q. If I substitute the numbers in, 3, 2, and 3, 3, 2, and 3, should be equal to 3 plus the force of Q. Okay, simplify it a bit, subtract 3 from both sides now, and we get the answer 5 Newtons. The reading here would be 5 Newtons. Okay, well, sure, I'll give you an example question to do a little bit later in the presentation. All right, so pause the video and read this question. Okay, so it's asking us where we might draw um, where we might draw an arrow to show the position where the force to raise the rail would be lowest. First, you must recognize that this is the pivot. The hinge is the pivot. 
So you want to make the distance between the pivot and where you're applying the force, the horizontal distance between the pivot and the force, as large as possible. So placing it right at the end. And what is the correct term in physics for the turning effect of a force? It is the moment. Okay? All right, let's have a look at this question. Okay, so uh, pause the video, read the question, and attempt it. Okay, right. It's telling us that the load here is 20 newtons. It's saying that what is the force transmitted to the piston? So this piston is being squashed down by this whole arrangement. Um, so the piston is also pushing back up for the forces, for the whole thing to be in equilibrium, which is what we're assuming. What you don't want to make the mistake of thinking is, is that this is the pivot. This is where the pivot is. So everything is rotating about this fixed point. All right. So we've got a force pushing up, which is from the piston, and a force pushing down, which is from the load. And they're turning this rod in different directions, one clockwise, one anticlockwise. So let's write this, the first part, the formula. The moments anticlockwise should be equal to the moments clockwise. All right, so what's turning it anticlockwise is the piston pushing up. It's going to turn this in that direction, which is anticlockwise. Its distance from the pivot point is one meter, and the force is unknown. We don't know. Okay, what's turning this whole thing clockwise is this 20 newton load here at a distance of not 1.2 meters, but 2.2 meters from the pivot point. Okay, so now let's just simplify this, uh, do a bit of maths, and find out what the unknown force is. If we divide both sides by 1, we find the unknown force. 2.2 times 20 divided by 1 gives us 44 newtons. Okay, pause this question and read it. Sorry, pause the video and read it. All right. Okay, so now what we've got here is like a little plastic triangle with a little hole drilled in it, and it's been nailed into a wall, but it's free to rotate. That's what this pivot point is, where the nail would be, if you wanted to imagine it. Okay, now in a force of 5 newtons is being applied at Q. It says, describe what, if anything, will happen to the piece of plastic. Well, if it's going to be pulled at P, at Q, and it's got a pivot point at P, it's going to rotate for a little bit. So it's not in equilibrium. That's what they're really wanting you to say. The triangle will not be in equilibrium, okay? And it's going to experience a little bit of angular acceleration. Maybe you wouldn't be expected to say angular acceleration, but it's not going to be in equilibrium is the main point. Pause the video, read this next question. Okay, this time we have uh, two forces acting, the same scenario as before, like a little plastic triangle or wood or whatever, but it's got a little hole drilled in it. It's been nailed into the wall so that it can still rotate freely, okay? What's going to happen this time? Well, this time we've got two forces acting at the same distance from the pivot point horizontally, okay? And uh, so that means that their moments are going to be equal. If moments turning something one way are equal to the moments turning it the other way, clockwise, anticlockwise, then you're going to have equilibrium, balanced. So the triangle will be in equilibrium and no acceleration will happen. Okay, now, for another two marks, you're being asked, what is the magnitude and direction of the force acting on the pivot? Is that saying acting on the pivot? Ah, oh, the pivot exerts on the piece of plastic. What force will the pivot exert on the piece of plastic? Okay, so if we've got two 5 newton forces acting this way, and we're assuming the situation is in equilibrium, then the forces acting in the horizontal should all equal to zero. So if you've got 10 newtons in total this way, you should have 10 newtons in total this way. Okay, notice that the arrow is twice the size of these arrows, because that's how I'm showing the magnitude of the force. Okay, um, a quick one, just uh, pause, pause it and have a read. Okay, which diagram shows a safer arrangement? I think everyone would recognize that this is pretty lethal. It's going to fall over at any moment. So you choose A. Now give a reason. Okay. The real reason is that when you've got this situation set up, this is going to be like a little pivot point. You've got a force acting down here. You've got the force of the mass at the base here. And it's basically, it's, it's, in, it's in balance. It's a, a situation where uh, the moments could rotate the object this way. To avoid this, we just want to have 
the mass over the base of the support. Okay, so you want to try and get the center of mass directly above the base. That's the most stable situation. Okay. Pause the video and read this question. Okay, so this time we have a uniform meter ruler and it says it's in equilibrium. The word uniform here just means that the, the meter ruler is made from the same material or it's uh, the same uh, mass per centimeter throughout. It's, it's not like this half of the ruler weighs more than this half. Okay, so the first bit's quite simple. It's only asking us for the conditions of equilibrium, which is exactly the same as what we looked at at the beginning. So clockwise moments must be equal to the counterclockwise moments or, or um, anticlockwise. Okay, the second condition is that the forces acting in the x direction must be equal and the forces acting in the y direction must be equal. Or forces up and down must be equal and forces left and right must be equal. Pause the video and read this question. Okay. Hopefully you've attempted this question as well. If not, just do that now. All right, so this is a little bit more tricky. It relates back to the original question we did right at the beginning of this presentation. Okay, so um, it's talking actually, it wants us to use this information. The sum of the forces in the X and, the, uh, and in the Y must be equal to zero separately. Okay, so um, <clears throat> basically, we have to ignore the X plane. We're not interested in moving left or right. Let's just look at the up and the down, the Y. Okay? So it's given us the down forces must be equal to the up forces. Okay? It's given us the mass of the ruler. Okay? So the weight of the ruler, 1.5 newtons. Okay? We know this force, 6 newtons, down. So we can write down the down bit. 6 newtons plus 1.5 newtons should be equal to whatever is pushing up. We were well, we've calculated and we've shown that this force up was 8 newtons here, and there's an unknown force here. So if I replace it with 8 newtons plus x for the unknown force, then I'm a step closer. I've just got to find x. So it's simple mathematical manipulation. Just simplify this a bit. So it's 7.5 newtons equal to 8 newtons plus x. I hope you can see that I'd have to subtract. If I subtract, 8 newtons from both sides, I get x on its own, and I'll have x is equal to minus 0.5 newtons. Here it's asking me for the magnitude of the force. If you know anything about scalars and vectors, you know that the magnitude is just the size on its own of the force. The size on its own is simply 0.5 newtons. Then they ask for the direction of the force. The direction of the force, because it said minus, the direction must have been down, okay? And then you can see that the 7.56 plus 1.5 plus the 0.5 would have equaled 8 newtons down plus 8 newtons up. Everything would have been balanced, okay? Which is what it should have been. Okay, pause this video and attempt the question. Okay, so you've been asked to find the density of a piece of rock. You've got a 100 gram mass, a meter ruler, a pivot, a measuring cylinder, some cotton and water, okay? And it tells you that the mass of the rock is approximately 90 grams. So it says to draw a label diagram of the apparatus from the list set up so that the student can find the mass of the piece of rock, okay? So we have a 100 gram mass, and what we're going to try and do is set up a scale. So we can put the meter ruler on the, uh, on the pivot, balanced. We could hang our 100 gram mass at a certain distance. And then we could hang our rock, at, which is an unknown mass, and we could maneuver it about until we find uh, the balance point. So that would work. Okay. To find the mass, we would simply take the moments equation, set it, set it out, and rearrange it to find the mass. And when we find this to be established distance, we would be able to calculate the mass from that. Okay, so state the readings the student should take and how these will be used to find the mass of the rock. So the student will place the rock on the meter ruler and move it until equilibrium was achieved, so it'd be balanced, measure the distance, and then use the formula stated here to calculate the, um, the mass of the rock. Okay, hopefully you found this presentation useful. If you have any questions or comments, please make them. Uh, subscribe. Thank you.